So here comes another gotcha question. So I'm a CFO and here's this government entity that has basically provided me with a recipe on how to make this dish, this financial dish. Um, I was an investment banker in a past life. I was actually at an accounting firm before that. I mean, I could do this. Why, I, why would I need to hire a valuation firm? Yeah, I, it, it goes back to what I mentioned earlier around valuations being, you know, coming in all shapes and sizes. And, uh, you know, if you're an investment banker doing evaluation, it's for a very different purpose. And the purpose of the valuation ultimately is going to drive, um, you know, the, the complexity and sort of the, 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 um, the specific challenges of doing the valuation correctly. And so for the 49A, it is for a very specific purpose. And if you happen to have the domain expertise in that area, it, it's theoretically possible to do the valuation. But the other piece to keep in mind is the IRS is looking for a third party perspective. And so, um, you know, it's very hard as the founder of a company to have an objective view of your business. And and, um, you know, the foreign entity evaluation provider, you know, is what allows the founder to, um, uh, to, to be relinquished of that accountability, that responsibility, um, you know, so that evaluation can be done with the, with the specific requirements for the foreign A in such a way that it's ob objective in, in, in view. Um, okay, so looks like I need to hire that firm. And so it, it, on the one hand, the one side of the brain says, oh, okay, this is a pretty simple exercise. This is a data-driven, fact-based kind of analysis um, on various aspects of the business that is, that is spelled out by uh, government regulators. And, um, but then you also talked about this other aspect of, of the analysis, which is working with a CEO and CFO to understand the, the narrative, which is a word one hears more associated with, uh, with writing prose um, versus uh, creating valuations. So say more about that, because that seems a little squishier and, and not as uh, you know, clear cut as zeros and ones. Yeah, for sure. And, and um, I think one of the, the privileges that we have in doing the 490 evaluation is that we uh, oftentimes we'll have direct access to the founder uh, and to hear their experience and their perspective on the company and the industry is, is a remarkable thing. Uh, that being said, um, you know, the CEO can oftentimes be a very interesting animal. Um, you know, they can be the eternal optimist and uh, it's your job to uh, bring them back down to earth. Or, um, you know, they could be still, they could be in the mindset of, you know, uh, knowing what the 490 evaluation is used for, and perhaps the 490 evaluation is specifically for their option grants uh, being issued to them. And so there's a mindset to, to drive the value down as much as possible. And so um, you, you can really kind of get both ends of the extreme in terms of, of, of the, the, the viewpoint um, you know, and the perspective that's being brought to the conversation. Um, you know, that being said, uh, the unique perspective that they have on the business and the market um, really does add a whole lot more color to, um, uh, you know, to the due diligence and to the valuation and informs uh, the valuation, frankly, a very unique way. Um, you know, the CFO um, oftentimes can provide uh, a little bit more of a clinical perspective on the company. Uh, and oftentimes is the best, uh, you know, source, um, you know, of truth for the forecast and you know, whether it's a forecast to meet baseline expectations or if it's an optimistic or a pessimistic forecast. And so I think it's an interesting interplay between the CFO and the CEO and, and, and the different perspectives that they bring that ultimately, uh, you know, drive the valuation in, in different ways.